is up guys i am the high-tech redneck and this is the donner tube drive nano overdrive pedal and i think it is eh, it's it's all right I'm, i've i've been dreading this review honestly but here we are <clears throat> so let's get right down to it first of all donner sent me this pedal for free to review whenever we were talking about other reviews that I was planning to do for their company already. I did not hit them up trying to get a bunch of free stuff. The other four Donner pedals that I have were gifts from family members. They did not come from Donner. I'm not trying to get a bunch of free stuff. And I'm going to be 100% honest about this pedal because it's not the greatest pedal I've seen from Donner. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's get into the features. This pedal comes with a nice little cardboard box, like so. It is like a jewelry box style of thing with a foam insert. It's perfectly good. It's smaller than their other boxes for the mini style pedals. And another feature is the extremely small size. Very obvious. That's a real blues driver. And this is the real uh, tube drive pedal. Very, very, very tiny pedal. And it still sounds, this thing sounds bigger and meaner than this guy. That's not necessarily a good thing. So, yeah, it has a dinky little manual with basic info. It's barely usable, but I don't really hate them for that because honestly, who reads the manual anyway? The manual is the same size as a blues driver. That's tiny, super small manual, one single page. Um, yeah, it's true bypass. I checked that out. It seems like a legit true bypass pedal. It uses a standard 9-volt power adapter like a boss pedal will. It has little rubber strips on the bottom which work the same way as the rubber pads but they're easier to remove if you want to velcro the pedal um but they work very good very sturdy little strips it has a very small level gain and tone knob and it has a mode switch to switch between normal and boost mode and a red led so <clears throat> according to the manual the working current is 21 milliamps and we don't have any any listing for the input or output impedance like we do on the mini pedal manuals. So yeah, the nano pedals lack that. So overall, I give this a 9 out of 10 for the features because I would like to see a way to adjust the high and low tones individually. But that's my only complaint. It's 9 out of 10. It's pretty good for the features if they do what they say they do, which we'll get into that. <clears throat> so let's go into construction and hardware. The Nano series of pedals are built with totally different hardware from the Mini series of pedals. You will see the big knobs, the little knobs, the switches, the foot switches, the quarter inch jacks, the power jacks. Everything is different about these pedals. So don't expect the hardware to be the same, you know, between the two. This one is definitely shrunken down in every way. Everything is smaller on this guy, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I do like that. <clears throat> The, uh, this pedal was the one exception to the perfect assembly that I've seen from Donner. This pedal had a loose foot switch nut, which was not a big deal, but I did have to snug it back up with a pair of pliers real quick. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's, you know, one point off the fit and finish, but it's not a, it's not a deal breaker by any means. The rubber feet are good quality. Quarter inch jacks, mode switch, knobs, foot switch, all awesome and super solid. So... Next up, we have a problem, a problem with the power jack. Now, before I get into this, I've spoken to Donner about this problem that I'm about to tell you about, and they've told me the problem has already been found and it's already been fixed in their production line. So this is only a problem in the old stock pedals that are sitting around in warehouses. So it may be a problem in their product for the next year or so until those pedals are sold off, but they have fixed it in their production. <clears throat> so, um... This is not a major, major problem on this pedal. I've never had any issues with it, but on the other nano pedal I have, this guy, it is a problem, or at least it was. <clears throat> so the power jack on the older nano series of pedals is not as good as those on the mini pedals. They don't allow the adapter plug to slip backwards without dying. In this pedal and in boss pedals and others, the adapter can slip backwards a fairly good degree before the pedal actually loses contact and loses power. With these, the adapter slips backward only a small amount before it loses power and dies. Now that doesn't mean it happens every time I use it. In fact, I've never had a problem with this pedal losing power in normal everyday functions. <clears throat> the only time I've had a problem is with this pedal losing power whenever I slide my pedals back and forth and adjust the power wire and it wiggles 
in the jack, then sometimes it works its way backwards. But <clears throat> realistically, it's not a big problem. It's just not the sturdiest part I've seen, and I am not a big fan of it because it's a power jack, and a power jack is very crucial. If you had, you know, maybe a nut on here that just kept loosening up over and over, I can deal with that. But when you've got something like a power jack that's crucial to this thing functioning, you, you can't mess that up. So, <clears throat> yeah, um, let's see. I have an old uh, five-way daisy chain from Power All that is very solid that slipped backwards in this when it works perfectly fine on all other pedals. So I actually bought a new five-way daisy chain this week to try on these pedals, and it's made differently, and it also slips backwards in these pedals. It only slips backwards whenever I do it on purpose, whenever I jiggle them and mess with them to see how much it takes to make them fail, but still, they do fail much earlier than these mini pedals or, say, a boss pedal will. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> and to be fair, you know, Donner does say that they fixed this problem already, but also, there are probably warehouses with a couple of thousand of these sitting around waiting to be ordered from eBay and Amazon already that, you know, have already been man manufactured. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I give this particular pedal a 5 out of 10 for the construction. Um, also, these knobs are kind of small to be functional, but whatever. That's, uh, <clears throat> that's a discussion for another time. So yeah, I give it a 5 out of 10 for construction. It would be a 9 out of 10 if we didn't have the power jack problem. But that is, once again, a big problem, so I'm taking a lot of points for it. <clears throat> the sound of this pedal is our next issue. So I saw this pedal on other YouTube reviews, and I thought, hey, it sounds amazing in this review, and then it sounds like crap in this other review. Maybe this guy just doesn't know how to record audio. And so I thought, you know, if I had this thing at my house on my rig i could probably dial in this really great chunky heavy tone with lots of like high gain overdrive that would just be killer and i was wrong um i love the general feel of this pedal it does have a very high gain overdrive sound and it's really ballsy and chunky i love what they were going for but it did not pan out at least not with the equipment i have maybe if you have you know a ten thousand dollar recording setup with you know a super super fancy guitar and all that crazy stuff but i mean i've got decent gear and yeah, i could not get good sounds out of this on the high gain settings <clears throat> so the normal mode of this pedal is just it's very very muddy and very dark on all settings no matter what the tone knob does not clean it up and does not fix it at least not in a way that i'm happy with if you like the sound of say a Les Paul with the tone knob rolled way way off and it sounds fuzzy and warm and weird if you really love that sound and you can work with it and play some bluesy stuff you might like this this will like instantly give you that sound without you having to roll your tone knob off but if you're like me and you like a distortion that can maintain the high end of the natural signal and be really searing and cut through the mix this is not it at least not on normal mode I found it totally unusable and uh, you might like it if you're just a bedroom player but if you if you're in a band and you need to cut through a mix you're not gonna like the normal mode on this <clears throat> um it sounds like a blues driver with less tone and less power at the same time it's just it, it's not that great <clears throat> so yeah it's common to hear people say that something is not half bad well the boost setting on this tube driver is half bad but it's also half good well, more like one-third. But the boost setting has a very transparent tone at very, very low gain settings, like where it's set right now, practically off, just a hair above zero. <clears throat> and so it sounds great there. And the tone knob is totally useful. You can see I don't have the tone knob cranked up that high for this setting because it doesn't need it. <clears throat> Until you turn the gain up, even one-third of the way, um, the distortion quickly gets totally out of hand in the boost mode it gets way too much there's way too much fuzzy ambient noise in the background that takes away from the notes that are actually being played and the tone just gets way too dark for the tone knob to do anything to help it the tone knob becomes useless very quickly it sounds like a blues driver with way more power with more balls and with less high end tone which kind of kills me um, so after several days of disappointment trying to get a good high gain sound out of this pedal that i was looking for 
I decided to try it out on the boost setting with a very low to medium gain overdrive instead, and I was totally blown away by the awesome tone. See, what, what I originally intended to do was run this blues driver on a low gain setting and use this as a high gain pedal after it. And what I realized soon was that I was going to have to run the blues driver on the fairly high gain setting, or medium to high gain as you can see, not really high, and then run this on the low gain setting and use this to push the blues driver. And in this combination, it worked amazingly. It was a whole new pedal in this lower one quarter of the gain sweep on, in the boost mode. It is seriously, seriously awesome. It's this really thick, chunky, meaty distortion, but it's not an extreme distortion. It's a fairly mild to medium distortion. It doesn't get up into high gain very well before it starts losing tone very rapidly. But what it does, you know, it doesn't do a lot. It, it just does that medium to low gain sound. But what it does, it does very, very well. So I've grown to like this pedal since I tried to use it, you know, since I started using it as a low gain type of pedal. <clears throat> So yeah, it, it turned out to be much more useful than I thought in my original few days of testing, and I'm glad I waited to make this review, because in the first week I had this, I thought, man, this is terrible, I'm going to have to just give this a bad review and be done with it, but it's not totally bad. It is, it's not all bad. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the... Uh, the small range of good sounds that this pedal can make, they can be tricky to dial in because of these small knobs, and... Uh, it's the only usable few sounds that this pedal offers, which is kind of disappointing. Um, a large percentage of the usable sweep on the knobs is just not usable. It, it's, it's not, I mean, it doesn't sound worth a damn at all. <laughs> Sorry, but it doesn't. It, it, it's just, it's disappointing unless you like your guitar to sound like it's being played through a car muffler. <clears throat> this pedal sounds better with compression and EQ to clean up the sound and to give it a mild boost and some saturation but it's still dark in the high gain range regardless of what you do to it due to the internal bass boosts in this that mimic the blues driver which this guy has kind of the same problem but more dialed in and not quite as out of hand <clears throat> um so yeah i think the bass is boosted just too much internally to allow this pedal to take advantage of even half of its gain <clears throat> It has a very great, very usable tone if you only want the low to medium gain sound and or if you want it to drive other distortions with it. Like I, I use this as, as a sort of boost or overdrive to drive into the blues driver and it works very well that way. But it's not going to be very versatile outside of that application. Thankfully, it does work in exactly the kind of application I was looking for. So I am going to keep it on my board. It happens to be perfect for me, but... It's not what I was expecting, and it may not be what you were expecting if you were looking for a very high gain overdrive. Um, <clears throat> I think this pedal needs a better voicing on the normal mode all the way around without changing the tone of the boost mode. And I think that, uh, well, like I said, I, I think you should fix the voicing in the normal mode and then also fine tune the boost mode and make it so that, uh, let's see. What, what did I write here? I'm sorry. I'm trying to read my notes. Um, yeah, I would find the fine tune the boost mode, and it could be one of the best overdrives out there. And so, yeah, I'm going to talk about more of that in a minute. But I am totally in love with the idea of this pedal, but I, I feel like it's still a work in progress. So I would recommend it for bedroom players only if you've played one in person and you're sure that you really want one. I give the sound a 7 out of 10 because 80% of the possible settings on this pedal are terrible, but the 20% of the settings that are usable sound really, really good. And that is what convinced me to keep this pedal despite all the issues that I have with it. So now that we're done with the sound, let's go on to the function. I think it has a slightly bad design that leads to bad functionality. Firstly, these knobs are tiny. I like the height of the knobs. They're very short. They're just tall enough, but they stay out of the way. But they need to be wider to allow more fine control of the sweep, especially on this pedal in particular, because you don't have much room to work with already. Things seem to work okay in normal mode, but then again, normal mode sounds so bad that I haven't played it for more than a few minutes at a time, and those occasions are rare. So functionally, normal mode is broken for me. Um, when the boost mode is engaged, the pedal is much louder and the volume knob has to be almost completely, uh, let's see, yeah, the volume knob has to be almost completely off to get the signal to match the clean levels. 
on a medium high gain setting the volume knob has to be turned so low that the pedal's voicing actually changes as it's on the brink of hitting zero percent and going silent because this pedal will go silent when you turn the volume down low enough and uh <clears throat> yeah so it's right on the brink of going silent whenever you're not even into the really crazy gain you're just up there in the medium high gain on you know under 50 percent just under 50 percent <clears throat> so yeah, and then once you have something like that set up, the smallest little touch on that volume knob can make a huge difference in your levels, and it can totally mess things up and make it extremely fiddly to dial in the levels properly. So I would set this pedal up before I left to go to a live show, and I would be afraid to even touch this thing at all during a live show because it could ruin the signal levels with just the tiniest minor adjustments and take 10 or 15 minutes to get them right again with extremely fiddly, very careful you know, dialing things in. Um, <clears throat> also, the power jack on the nano pedal, it, it's a degree better than this wave pedal that I had, this other nano pedal, but it's still not perfect. It does not grip the jack very well. It allows it to slip out. And if you jiggle it long enough and hard enough, it will eventually slip backwards. But functionally, I have not had any problems whatsoever from it on my pedal board. I just don't feel like it's a very roadworthy jack at the same time. Like, I trust it playing around the house perfectly fine, even a small live gig. But if you're a, a musician who makes a living playing music, I'm not sure I would trust this. You might want to invest in something a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> so for Donner, I say you definitely need a better voicing. Um, you definitely need more controllable settings in the boost mode to keep it from sucking all the tone out whenever the gain is turned up. And you need a better volume control in the boost mode with more room to finally adjust the lower volumes. And you need a better power jack so it doesn't fail in the middle of a show. I would suggest adjusting the volume and the gain knobs to only allow 70% of the current maximum levels when they're turned up fully. That way you have more room on the bottom end of the sweep to finally adjust things. <clears throat> I give this pedal a 3 out of 10 for the function because one of the two modes is not usable at all. The power jack issue makes me question how roadworthy the pedal is. And the issue with the knobs in the boost mode nearly ruins the one nice thing about this pedal and, and the sound that the pedal makes. And it makes everything much more troublesome than it needs to be. So all in all, despite the issues with this pedal, I am going to keep it on my board because I love the sounds I can get with it. And the tiny size is really awesome. <clears throat> I think it has a great tone despite the large range of bad tones that it has. And I believe some of those need more work. It also has some issues in the sensitivity of the controls and the power jack, which detract a lot from the total score. I honestly don't recommend this pedal to you unless you've played one in person and you're sure that you want it. I give the tube drive a 5 out of 10 overall. This pedal shows promise, but it definitely needs improvement. It did not work as expected, and it was luck that it worked out on my board in a way that I like it. So I'm going to leave you guys with a demo. I'm going to show you some of the good, the bad, the ugly of this in the sound department. And I hope you guys found this awesome and interesting and useful. I am the High Tech Redneck. Later. And we will start with a G chord yet again. This is the setting I like on this pedal. Okay, so now that we've seen that, let's go through some of the other functions. Let's go back to the normal mode and start with that. I'll show you how bad it sounds. You'll notice it is immediately much quieter than the boost mode, so we need to raise our levels. You'll notice our levels are not up very high here, and we can get extremely loud. This volume knob 
goes way, way around, and it's just extremely loud, way, way loud. So this does not need to go this loud. It really doesn't. I mean, it maybe needs the the, the bottom 60% of the sweep of this part. Should be fine. And then whenever we bring our gain up, especially, we start to get out of control, and we have just a really dark, muffly kind of tone. Do you hear the high end in that? There's so much mids and I guess the high end of the bass uh, that are boosted in that that it just sucks all the tone out of your high end in your guitar. Especially in lead guitar kind of stuff. I'm not a big fan and the gain does go totally out of control. Even on the normal mode we have... And the tone knob does very little to clean it up. That's not the worst sound I've ever heard, but it's definitely not the best. It has this really awesome, ballsy, powerful kind of sound, but it just sounds muffled. It sounds like it's coming through a car muffler. So let's switch back to our boost mode here, and we will turn our volume down a little more. And you will see that in this mode, with the gain above 50%, it is just totally, totally out of control. And for some reason, my signal just died? What? Oh, volume. I forgot about that. The volume on the pedal. Yeah, this uh, this volume pot can absolutely go to zero and shut off the sound of your signal if you're not careful. You see it's very loud there and I make the slightest, tiniest adjustment. Actually that didn't even adjust. There we go. And it's dead. Completely dead. Back up just a tiny bit. It sounds... that sounds anemic and weak and I don't like that. So we come back to... And I'm just barely, barely touching that knob at all. And you notice our clean levels... We're already at the clean level. And then if you start boosting the volume, remember this volume goes ridiculously high. Insanely, stupidly high volume on here. We have to basically make this thing silent. In order to match our levels. And once again, the gain goes absolutely crazy. I know it's loud, sorry, that's about as quiet as this pedal can go. So yeah, very muffled. It sounds okay, there's a lot of ambient background noise, kind of fuzziness going on from the uh, the distortion in the mids, that giant boost. Now if we bring this back down to one third or lower on the gain knob, the tone knob becomes useful again, magically. That sounds like a guitar, a good guitar. can actually make it tinny again with the highs. So there you go. I absolutely love the sound of this in this gain range from about right here down to zero on the gain. Sounds amazing. It really It's better than a blues driver. It's better than almost any overdrive I've ever tried, but everything else that is wrong with this pedal, such as this volume knob being so fiddly and all of the useless settings around here and the fact that the knobs are small and hard to dial in just makes it a pain. But anyway, 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am going to make some music with this thing for you guys and leave you with that. Hope you enjoyed this. Later.